Welcome to The Paradigm Shift, episode 149. 149 weeks in a row. We have two big guests on today. Justin, I see you on there, brother. We're going to bring you on in less than five, less than five. Joey D in the house, waiting for my partner, crime, Big Dave. We're going to get this party started. How you guys feeling? Happy Saturday. Let me know what's on the, for this weekend and how you guys are feeling right now. And also, let's drop a couple questions for the guests and so forth. And we're going to bring on Big Dave right now. So I'm going to officially lose the most handsome cat on this live award. Big day! What's going on? Where are you, Sex Candaroo? I am in Nashville, Tennessee. Cool city. Yeah, it's the music city. That's what they say, yeah. That's on the list for bachelor party destinations. We yeah. Can. No, we uh, had dinner at uh, Justin Timberlake's restaurant, and <clears throat> there was like three bachelorette parties, two bachelor parties. Uh, so they, they were already rocking and rolling. Nice. Did you indulge in a cocktail? I had one cocktail. You know, that's uh, my limit. But what I've learned is, you know, one martini is not enough and two is too many. So I stick <laughs> to one. Fair enough. What are you doing out uh, there? Speaking? I was speaking, uh, interviews. I did a little, it was fun. I went and reverted back to my last night. I did Fox Sports <laughs> last night. And uh, so we were on a, a little little tour here. We had a VIP dinner with some extraordinary people. Uh, James Maslow uh, from Big Time Rush, he, he moved here. and We do a little mentoring and, and friendship and all types of extraordinary guys. Ironically, <clears throat> uh, Chandler, who was here Thursday night with us, went out to California. So speaking tomorrow with, uh, with Michael Chandler out at the, the ranch, uh, the Black Ops event out there. So <clears throat> it's been uh, a, a long week. That this month and we uh we had three cities in one day which was fun I, I went from Fort Lauderdale to Atlanta to Nashville for dinner on Thursday and then speaking in interviews and meetups uh yesterday and we got a big event Sean and Lacey Dill came in uh with James and those guys we have a fight night uh tonight at the standard and so my wife flew in she's been here with me it's been That's amazing awesome, awesome. Uh, it's funny because two things. Number one, I know Chandler's got a big fight coming up. McGregor, I'm super excited for him. Um, and, and also, it feels like the longest month ever. Not in a bad way because everything's going great, great start of the year. But I guess it's, we've had five weeks in January. Next week is still January, so it's felt like a long month. Yeah, it's been it's been great. You know, uh, it's been the best year of my life so far, and feels like my birthday went on forever too, thanks to guys like you. So it was a, a, a wonderful experience. And I think I've also learned a lot here uh, this month. Uh, so some really big breakthrough epiphanies. I love it. Uh, I'll ask you a quick question and then we'll bring on some of our guests and, and we'll get this party started. I know that you're always sharpening the axe and, and adding tools to your repertoire and so far. What are you educating yourself on now? What are you like doing personal development with? What are you working on right now that has you excited? Has me most excited, you know, studying Einstein has set me off into a different type of perspective and participation in that and understanding time and space and general and specific relativity. But to be able to articulate uh, the more complex applied mathematics and theoretical physics into a vernacular that's not above uh, where you can meet people. And believe it or not, the study of the applied mathematics and theoretical physics and the historical analysis has gained a, a lot of uh, attention and attention for me on marketing. Uh, and I didn't expect after studying Einstein in the pursuit of uh, general and specific relativity and a variety of scientific matters that it would be a breakthrough in marketing. And what I learned was through learning about Einstein himself and not necessarily just the applied mathematics and theoretical physics is that Einstein probably was one of the greatest marketers of all time. Uh, I think that Shakespeare and Einstein had an extraordinary enlightenment or awareness to marketing. Uh, obviously, 
if you talk about Shakespeare, 99.9% .9 of the world knows who Shakespeare is. Uh, that's a pretty strong brand. But Einstein, it, it, it's, it's one thing to be in the entertainment business like Shakespeare and to create a legacy because you've written the Bible or you've written Chicken Soup for the Soul uh, or Hamlet. Uh, but the most remarkable thing thing of the marketing brilliance and genius, the expression of God that Einstein, uh, with no social media, no TV, uh, was able to build a brand at such a high value with none of that by being a scientist. By being a scientist, uh, you know, there's been many, multiple Nobel Prize winners, but most people only know one. In fact, the most remarkable thing about Einstein's brand as a scientist, not an entertainer like Shakespeare, but a scientist, is that Shakespeare, if you go around, I mean, uh, if you go around the world today, the entire world, the 8.1 billion people or so, and you ask them, if I asked you who was the greatest genius of all time, 99.9% .9 of the entire world would come up with the same person. So it's one thing to build a brand that has 100 million followers like Kardashian. It's with all the advantages of media. But it's another thing to build a brand that, as a, a scientist, has the greatest value. Right? If I'm going to build a brand, I want to build a brand like Einstein, where people say, hey, you know, who's the kindest person? When I say kind, you say blank. Imagine 99% of the world, 99.9% .9 of the world. When you say kind, I say Meltzer. Now that is a marketing genius. And he wanted the world to know him as a genius, an expression of God. I want people to know me for kindness and to inspire people to be kind. I am far, 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 far away at this time in my living life. But I will tell you this, I may be farther ahead than Einstein was when he was 56. So I'm inspired that things aggregate, accelerate and compound exponentially if you do things and create a legacy even when you're not here because Einstein's brand continued to grow after he passed away. Uh, and to that measure, I've been invited to speak at uh, Princeton at Einstein's lab. Uh, and we're gonna have a meet up there we're going to do a sp speaking at Princeton and then do a VIP dinner out there in your backyard. Hopefully, uh, you know, we, we know how popular you are, that our schedules won't, won't uh, interfere with the amazing Craig Siegel, that you'll join me because I would love to share that experience with you. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, let, let me know what it is. Consider it done. And, and not a coincidence that you're doing that. And I thought that was really beautiful. And it makes so much sense based upon how well I know you and, and so forth. And I'm not sure if I've asked you this before. I probably have. But did you see Oppenheimer? Yes, I loved it, especially the parts about, uh, you know, Oppenheimer's lab also is at Princeton. So I get to visit that uh, and uh, took the choice to speak uh, in uh, the lab of Einstein. But yeah, uh, love, love the movie. Uh, very long and a little bit slow, but every time... The, the way they tied it into Einstein at the end, that made the movie for me. So, yeah, I loved it. When is that that you'll be speaking there? Now, we're, we're arranging it now, but it looks like it's going to be in March. Okay. And then also, real quickly, before we bring on our guests, if you have five minutes this weekend, let's try to discuss that deal. Oh, no. I, I got to do it today. So, uh, super proud of you, by the way. And uh, Craig and I have started uh, an amazing uh, consulting opportunities together. And we're a good combination of uh, perspectives and relationships that complement one another. And I love to go at these things uh, with uh, more than one person and provide more than one uh, perspective on helping a company get to where they want to be or better. Yeah, I'm talking about that. Oh, there look who's here. Talk about handsome. <laughs> What's up, Jay? Oh, I don't know this guy. What the heck? What's up, guys? I'm coming in third in this, uh, in this duo here, so. Uh, um, uh, you guys are too kind, but uh, my, my wife's listening at least, so maybe you'll inspire her. The two handsome guys think I'm handsome, so that's nice. I love it. Justin, how you doing, brother? It's great to see you. Uh, it's great to see you, too. I uh, I know we've been texting. Um, David, uh, break bread together for Lauderdale. So For some reason, you're cutting out a little bit, Justin. You, 
Say that again. You're, you're cutting out a little bit. The your voice. My voice. Is yeah. Cutting out a little bit. Now you, it was cutting out a little bit. Is that Can any you hear better, us, you guys? Yeah, you guys. Yes. You guys are clear. Okay. Uh, first of all, congratulations, brother. You got a big new book coming out. It is coming out. Yeah, we're super excited. It's uh, David's been so kind to write the forward for this, the power of ownership. Um, it's, it's it's something I just, uh, you know what it's like to write a, the reinvention formula when you came up with it. You know how excited you are with um, the content that's in there. And David, uh, all your books that you've put out, you just know that you put your heart and soul into something. You've had these epiphanies and these downloads, and now it's in a resource that's available to people. It's, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for, for people to get their hands on it and um, uh, and just to see the, the change and impact that it makes. I imagine there's too much handsomeness and energy on you because the connection's not great, um, but, but we'll make yeah. the best of it. Uh, if, you have, if you have earphones, put, put them in, Jay. And then I, I gotta say this about Justin. We, we're blessed to have a, a, a very uh, high level a fun dinner in Fort Lauderdale after we were at the Rick Macy Tennis Academy. And um, and I got to know Justin at, at a much deeper level. And there was Kim Perel and, and Grant Cardone and Sean Dill. And every person at the table had a frequency that was elevated, which is always the criteria of the dinners that I share. Everyone has an elevated, but different experiences. Uh, but I will tell you, out of everyone there, uh, all of them resonate with me. And Kim Perel may be one of my favorite people on earth, but the uh, rookie of the year uh, for my dinner, the guy that like every time he talked and he was, I, I don't know if he knew I was listening sometimes when he was talking and channeling and, and but man, every time he talked, it, it resonated with me. We are on the exact same frequency. And he uses, like I say, different vernacular vocabulary, uh, but there's a few moments when he talked about, you know, when, when you do this and this and that, you don't understand the power that you have and the ease of it. Everything's easy. And he, he's just, you know, saying all the things that I try to explain to people the same way. And the energy was growing and growing and he just couldn't help himself. It was coming through him. And I'm like on my side of the table across from him going crazy going, yeah. Like I felt like, you know, when Martin Luther King or, or, uh, uh, one what, what of the preachers, and they got like the five guys behind it. Sing it, Jesse. Go, Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. I, I was like, go, Justin. That's right. Amen, brother. Amen. And so I just want to say, uh, when I pay attention to things, it's because it resonates with me. I capture information that resonates with me, people and ideas and books and podcasts and all the things like Einstein that resonates with me. Uh, man, if you don't buy this book, uh, if you enjoy this type of frequency of uh, the experience we have, the paradigm shift every single Saturday or all the other shows that Craig and I do, you're not, if you enjoy that, take it to the next level. Uh, go ahead, get this book and that excitement that he has for it will be shared. But more importantly, the expression of God that comes through this man and the ease that he can bring to your life uh, will bring far more value than anything else you can put and surround yourself around. So congratulations, Justin. And I can't tell you, you're on my VIP list like Craig. I'm going to be inviting you to all kinds of stuff because uh, you just resonate with me and teach me so much. So thank you. Well, thank you for the kind words. I mean, you've, you've been a mentor um, from, from a distance for a long time, and it's just been so great to now be with you and uh just to be in in your ethos and uh craig same thing um although we haven't been able to be in the flesh with one another yet um i've just really enjoyed getting to to know you and and just build solid foundational relationships i think so often in this world everything's become so transactional where it's hey let, i'll phone you if you phone me i'll introduce you to somebody if you introduce me to somebody i'll do business with you if you do business with me um, I'll post on your story if you post on mine, rather than just, I really want to get to know the heart of the person. I want to align with the heart of the person. I want to just be there to serve you. And hey, you know what? If, if we can just really align on mission and vision, then everything else comes, uh, comes in its place. And I firmly believe that when alignment is set before assignment, great things happen. Love it. Yeah, great stuff. Agreed.
Um, I want to ask you a question too, and I think this will be valuable for the audience. I was checking out your content, and I saw you talking about a tip of the spear type of person, and I just like the way that sounded. I imagine that'll be very valuable for the listeners today. What do you mean when you say somebody is a tip of the spear type of person? So tip of the spear people are okay being different. They're okay swimming upstream. They're okay not blending in. They're okay making decisions based off of commitments and convictions rather than conveniences and circumstance. And when you're around to the spear people, you know who they are. They're the people who are innovative. They're the people who are um, channeling um, that, that deeper calling. Because here's the, here's the unique thing, and I want everybody to grasp this, is what you're called for is so much bigger than what you're praying for. However, what you're praying for, you're just not yet prepared for. And it requires you to live differently. It requires you to do things that other people aren't willing to do. It requires you to change your habits, your behaviors, your lifestyles, your thought processes, the books you read, the environments you go into, the places that you dwell in. And when you're willing to do that, that is what creates change. And so tip of the spear people have to be around tip of the spear people because think about a knife. If a knife is sharp and you use it constantly and it's constantly being used as a tool, I'm simply a tool. I'm no better. I'm no smarter. I'm no um, genius. I'm no, I'm no better than anybody else. I'm quite frankly, I'm one step from stupid. But ultimately, what ends up happening is when you're constantly being used as a tool, you start to dull a little, little bit. And the only way to sharpen yourself again, iron sharp as iron, the only way is to get around tip of the spear people because they will continue to sharpen you, continue to help you stay being poured into so that you can go and ultimately pour into others. I've never felt better being called a tool before. And uh, now I know why so many people call me a tool. <laughs> um, that's beautiful. And I love the fact that uh, we're praying for things we're not prepared for yet. In order to get prepared, there has to be pain that will propel us to the preparation in order to be a better self, a higher self, to get to a better situation, a better position in our life to help even more people that iron sharpens iron. And uh, I now feel very comfortable uh, renaming the show, The Three <laughs> Tools. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, it's really, for, for me, Justin, um, I'm on a mission to empower others, to empower others, uh, to empower others to be happy. And uh, it's so nice to know that uh, I've been able through all these years to create a, create a perpetual, uh, perpetual uh, content that can empower people that give me that exponentiality that I was praying for. And to give that thousand times a thousand times a thousand. And with working with Craig, uh, for so many years now and seeing him empowering people like you and then knowing as your indication with the alignment with your new assignment to empower even more people with the blessings that you've learned uh, right here is three of the legacies that Craig's going to empower a thousand people like Justin who's going to empower a thousand people to empower a thousand other and it makes me feel great that the bright light that we've created together will overcome those loud but weak darkness that exists out there, the insecurity, the fear, uh, in that interference that so many of us as a unified uh, system that we belong to can incorporate and help one another, not in a zero sum manner, but in a value add manner uh, by knowing that we're giving and we're given even more and we all need to practice receiving what we've been given not necessarily just expect to receive what we give. And uh, I see that in you. I've always seen it in the eagle up there flying high above us. And uh, it took me a lot more dummy tax and many more years to get to where you two turkeys are, I mean, tools are. And uh, I'm so proud of both of you. So thank you. Yeah, I received that. Thank you. Uh, we're going to bring on our second guest. And it's the same frequency. It's going to be a lot of energy. Justin, if you have 10 minutes, I'd love for you to hang yeah, out. Love, love it. Yep, yeah, we're going to bring on Brian. This is going to be fantastic. B is in the house. The power of ownership, baby. Everybody grab a copy of Justin's book. And personally, I can't wait to, to dive in as well. Ownership. Yeah, read that forward. It does not mirror the, the book. The, the book's way better. Oh, look who's here. here. <laughs> well, what's up, guys? What's up, brother? How are you? Dude, I'm doing 
going great. This is literally my first time on Instagram logged in. The team sends me the login info. They do all my social stuff. So I'm like, am I in? Is it working? Let's go. <laughs> we love it. Join the party. Welcome. Where are you dialing in from? Where are you? You know, I'm on, I'm on a uh, weekend boys trip with my 11-year-old son. Uh, we're on a uh, chess tournament weekend, hanging out in a hotel outside of Austin. Was just soaking up the love between you guys, by the way. Um, super inspiring, seriously, just to feel the, uh, the love uh, between the three of you and um, your affinity for one another and your commitment to making a difference. I just want to celebrate the three of you tools and, uh, <laughs> uh, and love your share. Yes, uh, There's going to be so much fun. Our communities, in case you weren't familiar, do a deep dive, play catch up. I think we just dive right in there. It's a great segue. I love that you're with your son right now. I know it's so important for you to teach your kids philosophy. Uh, and stoicism and so forth. Why is that so important for you? I think that's really cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look, you know, we're like you trying to change the world. And I love the way that you frame it up, David, empowering people to empower people. That's literally our specific mission. Uh, but at the end of the day, for me, we got to raise the next generation of heroes. You know, each of us needs to step up and show up um, in general, and particularly those of us who are parents and blessed to have kids and, and really, you know, model the things that we hope our kids in the next generation um, will just make more of a natural part of their existence. But that's how I think we're going to change the world. You know, as each of us coming together, being our best, raising the next generation of heroes. And I'll tell you what, man, you know, he's 11 now. He got into chess a year ago. And, you know, if you have kids, you know that something special happens at 8, 9, 10, 11. And it's gone from, you know, helping mom, you know, and trying to be a good dad and all that to really being a dad, you know. And we're out doing burpee, doing his match, you know. Get our pre-match protocol, dude. Chest up, chin down, calm, confident. Let's go. It's just super fun to cultivate, um, you know, all these ideas in the context of playing chess. God, yeah. I'm just holding this hand, man. I mean, it's just the sweetest thing just to be there, just boys only. You, you my know? friend, I have a soul that is lit up right now, almost as lit up as Dave's smile. <laughs> What are you going to say, Dave? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, as a father of four in you know, the last and youngest one, now 13, uh, there's a few things that I see in this empowerment uh, mission. And it's, you know, understanding how we feed others and others feed us to bleed us in the assignment and alignment that Justin was talking about, but also the relativity. So many of us, uh, we feed the wrong people and we let the wrong people bleed us. Uh, and so to be in Austin with your 11 year old and recognize uh, who's feeding you and who you're supposed to feed and the relativity of that. But also there's a third axis of association and we want to associate with the right people and the right ideas. And it's so wonderful to associate with all three of you now while we're all on the weekend, while we're all spending time with our family, while we're recognizing the feeding and bleeding and relativities in our lives. Um, and it's, really important. I will give a little bit of fatherly advice uh, that I've learned because I'm like you, that 11, and it's my lucky number, by the way, th that's the age. Remember, there's three stages of fathership and I'm just have touched on and experienced them. One is idolization. So an 11 year old will, if you're uh, any type of father, they will idolize you. And what a great blessing that is, but it's a responsibility to make sure that we have the radical humility uh, with our children to be able to empower them and and not ignore that idolization that we have to remember they're they're watching us more than listening to us and your son is blessed to be watching you and taking him and spending that time with him because usually when puberty hits they start moving into the demonization side of things uh, where they watch you but they don't listen to you and everything you do is not what you should do. They know better than you. And then I have a 24 year old now as well. And she's moving into the, my favorite phase of, of being a parent to a child when you do the job correctly, humanization. Uh, and so, you know, enjoying the idolization and taking on the accountability of that, enjoying the demonization and allowing people to sow their own way and support them in their own opinion, like the tip of the spear, let them be a tool. And then the humanization where you now are collaborative uh, with your legacy and to be collaborative with your legacy is a blessing and only one which been, can be given to you by that parental 
uh, accountability that we uh, go ahead and step into our own and learn more from uh, than for and through. It's wonderful. And I uh, really applaud you for spending that guy's trip at 11. And uh, please soak it in, remember it, because uh, in a few years, uh, you have a little bit more of a difficult journey as uh, the demonization period of testosterone and estrogen starts seeping in <laughs> to the world. Brian, yeah. well, Brian, I just want to honor you really quickly because I think so often when, when anybody's a coach or anybody's in this place, it's so easy sometimes to raise everybody else's kids um rather than your own and the fact that you prioritize your family and your children um to be able to do this because um y your kids aren't the ones when you walk in the door going it's dad like woohoo like they're celebrating everything you do and quite frankly you'll tell them something and they might not even respond to it but you tell somebody else's kid that and they're like just like oh my gosh and so it's it's a humbling experience to go and do something and raise your own children and i just want to honor you for that for, for prioritizing that and make making that something that is so purposeful and intentional to you appreciate it man and uh, yeah. above the uh, few steps ahead of me wisdom there david we got this <laughs> yeah uh, i love all of this uh we'll land the plane with the juicy nugget which uh, i was checking out some of brian's content which is awesome and uh, I saw you talking about the difference between trying to and trusting you will. And I thought that was really beautiful, brother. Can you showcase what that means? Yeah, track. So that's from, uh, you know, I create these things called philosophy you know, in which I pull out <clears throat> the big ideas. Right? So that one's from a book called The Mental Game by a guy named Aaron Donnelly, who talks about a struggling goal, kind of like a fable with like mental toughness, wisdom. Anyway, basic idea idea there was, you know, great performers um, don't try to win. They trust they will win um, when they uh, do their best, just focus on the protocol. So it's exactly what I do with him, you know. So he's going in and he's working the protocol, you know. Games are won in the days and weeks and months before he plays. You know, mommy's got a meditation we listen to uh, before we do it, in which we remind ourselves that. But that idea of of um and actually i might have gotten that from lanny basham now that i think about it but one of those mental toughness guys where you know don't go out and try to try too hard right slow down um trust that you will win especially over the long run and especially the ultimate game you know i mean yeah i'm not teaching him chess i'm teaching him how to live life and arite the t-shirt i'm wearing the name of my book is the one word answer the ancient stoics would have given you on how to live a good life we Played it as excellence or virtue, but basically be your best self moment to moment to moment. When you do that, you're winning the ultimate game and you tend to win all the other games. Most people think are the most important games, um, but that comes as a byproduct. You know? um, long answer to a short question, but that's the idea. Trust you will win in the near term and especially over the long run when you do uh, show up, work your protocol, etc. I love it. Just curious, have you ever read The Infinite Game? The read what? The Infinite you know, Game. I need read uh simon's book i have not read that one yet um obviously familiar with the themes but um same basic idea yeah great one yeah Dave, go ahead. Uh, just to take one step on that is that as we trust we will win i think we have to clearly define for ourselves number one what trust is and i help define for my children when we talk about trust that it's a combination of wisdom and faith uh and that's the road that will bring all of that to us as we clear away the speed bumps and the accidents and all the things that happen on that road. And if you decide not to uh, have that trust, seeking the wisdom and the faith, um, and then the winning was clearly defined uh, as doing your best. And it, for me, the only three questions I ask my kids and whatever they're participating in and progressing in is, did you do your best? What did you learn? And did you find a way to enjoy it? And I, I, I think there's a difference between did you have fun and did you find a way to enjoy it? Because the ultimate joy comes from learning to love what you didn't love, love what you didn't like, love what other people don't love and love what other people don't like. And if you can teach your kids to do that consistently with every day and persistently without quit, life will tell you all its secrets and cheat codes and nobody articulates those cheat codes better than justin in his new book it's it's really fascinating how he articulates something that i've tried to empower people with for so many years and the way he says it 
I wish I would have thought of because it just somehow resonates with me. I'm like, God damn it. That's a much better way to describe what I'm trying to say. And the biggest compliment you'll get if you write a book is, hey, man, thanks so much for writing my book. Uh, you just said it a lot better. And uh, all three of you guys have done that with what you do and how you do it. So continue to have the wisdom and faith and learn to enjoy that consistent, persistent pursuit. Hell yeah. And I just want to say thank you guys, all of you, on a Saturday for your beautiful resonance and energy. I want our communities, I encourage you guys to follow them, check what they got going on, buy their books. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for the awesome conversations. Genuinely appreciate it. Love you guys. Thank you for having you guys. See ya. Have a good weekend, guys. Stay able to speak to you Enjoy. later. Enjoy, everyone. <laughs> that just happened. That was cool. Uh, love you guys. Take care. Uh, happy Saturday, guys. Have an unbelievable weekend. I'm going to give a shout out. Happy birthday to my fiance tomorrow. Uh, let's go to a cameo. Let's say hello. It's just me now. Wait. The birthday girl. Uh, thank you, guys. Have an unbelievable uh, weekend. Go check out everything that Justin and Brian have going on. They're badasses, awesome knowledge, um, beautiful energies, and so forth. If you guys like uh, free nuggets throughout the week, inspirational, how to activate your desire and so forth, spiritual business and so forth, you can text the number at the bottom of the screen, totally free, 917-634-3796. Give out strategies and nuggets and help you guys elevate your frequency. What an awesome conversation, guys. I'm pumped for the rest of the weekend. Let's be productive, not just busy, but sharpen the ax. Let's find ways to create that white space. The weekend is a really good time to move the needle because during the week we're, we're really in it. On the weekend, you can kind of disconnect to reconnect and, and really get ahead. So uh, love you guys and, and thank all the guests, my partner, Prime, Justin, uh, and Brian. Have a great weekend, guys.